Welcome to Missing the Mark, where we look for meaning in strange places. I'm Christopher. Today I'd like to talk about the book How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It's a very interesting book. This is sort of a follow-up to, to my video on how to make friends. It's a book that you could describe as being in the genre of teaching social skills. And it, it's a very good book. Um, it, it's a somewhat... You know, it's an introductory book. It's an introduction to certain techniques uh, for how to get along well with people. And the um, the thing that I think I need to say off the bat, because um, both from the, the title of it and just sort of the nature of it, is it's easy for people to think that this means it's about manipulating people. And the book is, in fact, quite the opposite. The book is, Dale Carnegie makes the point over and over again, that you that manipulating people, though possible, is not a long-term viable strategy. And that, um, he doesn't put it in this way, by the way, it's a very positive sort of book. But that basically, um, what social skills consist of is knowing how to interact with a person such that the interactions go well. That is required if you're going to manipulate somebody for some bad end, but that is also required if you're going to interact with them and have things come out well. Even if you want it, you know, in the case for you want to get along with them well, you want to work with them to mutual benefit, or even just to their benefit, to the exclusion of your benefit in some cases. All of these things require the same basic level skill set of how to interact with people and interact in ways that actually, well, succeed. So the book is not at all about how to manipulate people in a negative sense. It's really about how to interact with people such that it works, that you get along. <clears throat> and um, in many cases, um, I mean, if you really, really had to distill his techniques down into, into a very, very um, overly short way, it would be basically consider things from the other person's perspective. But what makes this book so valuable is he goes through, you know, different situations and different sorts of things and considers them from the other person's perspective and shows what considering them from the other person's perspective looks like. Um... You know, uh, it's a variety of things. Like, one of the things, like, there's a section on criticism, and uh, in general, don't do it. Um, it's, as I said, it's a good starting point. There are times when criticism is necessary, and he gets into that just a little bit. Um, but it's... It, the thing about criticism is people are, by and large, extremely sensitive to criticism, so that you need to criticize at a very low volume for it to come across very loudly. And if you criticize, I'm using volume metaphorically, but if you criticize at a higher volume, it comes across as screaming. And if you come across, criticize at like a normal volume, it comes across as, as super intense. And if you, you know, intensify, it just becomes utterly deafening. And so you need to calibrate because you have to think of it from the other person's perspective. You have to stop worrying about what your feelings feel like here and expressing your feelings and think about what is the other person going to receive and calibrate accordingly so that they receive at the intensity you actually mean to communicate. So like that, that's an example, um, you know, in terms of criticism and in terms of like collaboration. Again, he really emphasizes think, looking at things from other people's perspectives. Don't start off with what you want from somebody else. Think about how what you want has something in common with what they want, and then when you are presenting it to the person, describe this mutually beneficial aspect, especially, you know, focusing on the parts that would interest them. You're taking up their time and describing it, you're asking for their time to do something, and so by explaining to them how this would benefit them, this is going to be making the best use of their time and also showing the greatest respect for them. And again, it goes into real detail on these things in a way that um, both through the use of anecdotes and stories, hypotheticals, he, he really works it out such that if this is not something you are well practiced in, it gives you a good sense of what's actually meant so that you can start practicing and actually start learning these sorts of skills to get along better with people. And, and it really works, it's both interpersonal um, in real life as well as on the internet. The, the same basic skills of considering things from people's perspective um, tends to apply. Uh, there's a quote in here I really love. I forget exactly where it is in the book, um, but it's, um, the, the quote goes, and it's regarding criticism, any fool can criticize, condemn, and complain. And most fools do. Um, I really love that. It's so very, very true. Um, 
you, there's a, it speaks to the self-selection factor. Since most fools do criticize, there, there's a curious thing. If, if only some wise people criticize, you know, criticize, condemn, and complain, and all fools do, one of the things you're going to find is that most criticism, condemns, um, condemnations, and complaints are going to come from fools. The, the, there being a reasonably ready supply thereof, and them doing so much more than other people, if you look at the total volume of the things. So, um, it's overall a very good book. Um, if you want to get better at getting along with people, especially if you are not well practiced in it, if you're well practiced in it, if, if you get along well with people, if you tend to, to ex do great in collaborations, if you tend to get along fairly well with people you haven't met as well as keep you know, holding on to longer term friends and so on, I doubt you're going to find much that's new. You might enjoy it. Um, you're probably not going to find much that you don't already know. You might enjoy it because it's something you know, put you know, occasionally put in a particularly good manner. Um, it, it's by no means like the advanced guide to being human, but it, it's a it's a good beginner's guide. And um, even if you do know what's in it, it's a good chance that you will know people who don't, and therefore reading it will enable you to recommend it to people. So it can be valuable for that too. Even if it's not useful to yourself directly, it can be useful to be able to sort of pass this on as a gift to people. So, um, yeah, it, you can generally find it. It's, I mean, published in, uh, you know, you can see mine says it's the 1980s edition. This is first published in, I think, the 1940s or 50s? I really should have looked this up before recording the video. Um, yeah, Copyright 1936 by uh, Dale Carnegie. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a fairly old book, so you can get used copies real cheaply, libraries will have it, um, and you can you know, pick up new copies um, pretty inexpensively these days too, I believe. So um, overall, yeah, I, I really recommend it. It's a good follow-up if you want to you know, win friends or influence people in a positive way. Um, I, I really recommend it. I mean, if your goal is cynical manipulation, there are probably you know, much better books for you. Because um, you know, one of the overriding themes is one of the best ways of, of winning friends and influencing people is by having their best interests at heart. He doesn't quite put it that way, and he's occasionally a little bit annoyingly general, but there's always that undercurrent to it, that it's only by having other people's best interests at heart do you actually succeed in interacting with them. Um, but again, the book's all about the practical ways of actually, you know, putting this into practice, developing the habits that do this such that in the moment when you don't have time to, you know, think through each action and have to be reacting according to your habituation, you will have built up the habituation that actually results in you interacting with people in that sort of very positive way, considering they're good in the things that you do. Uh, that, by the way, is also um, one of the key elements of politeness. What's politeness? I mean, look at all the elements of politeness, and pretty much always, there are always some variation of considering how the other person feels and adjusting accordingly. So, um, I recommend the book. I hope you uh, check it out and enjoy it. And until next time, may you hit everything you aim at.